So, Errol, um, my understanding is that you are Frank Barton's promoter. Yeah. And uh, congratulations, you got a very big fight uh, to, to put him into and get ready for it. Um, what prompted you to want to get into that line of work, and uh, how, how did you connect with Frank? Um, what prompted me is just, just seeing the, the way, just the brutal history of, you know, how fighters get treated and get taken advantage of. And, um, you know, I seen a fighter like Frank, actually my coach, had talked to me about him. And um, I started looking at him, and I got him a few fights, probably like three or four fights. And he looked sensational. And actually, my promoter told me, he was like, yo, you... You better, you better, you better sign him because he's fighting on TV and everybody's looking at him, and somebody's gonna scoop him up. So um, we we talked to each other, and um, he wanted to sign with me. I wanted to sign him, and I, we just had a heart to heart. And I was just telling him, you know, how I was all about, you know, uh, being his promoter, and how, you know, I would be 100%, you know, just telling him the truth about everything, and everything would be real and not fake, and. Um, you know, he agreed and, you know, he signed on that line and, um, you know, he's here now. What are the things that a promoter should do for the fighter and what are the things that you want to leave to the trainer and the manager uh, and not put on your own plate? Um, well, I try to, I mean, I try to have a, you know, a say something there with him, you know, I try to have a say so in, you know, a bougie fight, you know, have a say so in uh, how much he, he'll get paid, uh, you know, where the fight's gonna be, uh, when he's gonna fight, when he's ready to fight, and uh, and just make sure he's 100% prepared. Like, sometimes I just call him and just check his mental and just see how's he doing. He don't even have a fight coming up, but I'm checking him just to see, you know, how's everything going, how's he doing. You know, and just how he feeling uh, just about life. But well, life can be a fight in itself, too. So, you know, I'm just all around across the board just on him and just trying to, you know, seek with him about, you know, everything that goes on in his life. So, because of what's, what happens, if he's doing good in life, I feel like in the ring it'll be a little much better because his mental will be just focused on boxing. His mind will be clear. Yeah, it'll be safe with him. So yesterday at the news conference, just not terribly surprisingly, Tank, uh, who's an instigator, who's a rabble rouser uh, of sorts, tried to get under Frank's skin. Only you would know whether he actually did get under Frank's skin by um, making disparaging comments about him and seeking to belittle him. As, as I saw it, they were walking off the dais at the end of the uh, event, and Tank was still talking to Frank, trying to uh, needle him and get under his skin. Um, Frank seemed pretty much unmoved and didn't seem to pay a lot of attention to it. Is that what you want? Uh, yes, definitely, because what I think Tank realizes is that Frank hasn't been on the stage, and this stage could be overwhelming with the bright lights and everything. And so he's just talking to him, he, you know, trying to do different ta tactics and antics, you know, just to get on his stand, just to rile him up. And I'll tell the friend, just, you know, just stay focused, focus on the game plan, because no matter what he says or what he does, at the end of the day, that bell still has some ring, and the ref got to step back, and y'all both got to fight. So anything, as long as he don't touch you, he can say anything he want to say. At the end of the day, the truth will happen inside the ring. So. Just focus on that and don't let him get under your skin because that's what he's trying to do. Tank is very experienced. He's been at this top level, so he know how the ride gets to people. Are. Tank has 27 knockouts from 29 fights. And he seems unusual to me because he's able to accomplish what he has accomplished without a lot of risk. He, uh, he's not throwing enough punches to put himself in harm's way. He's selecting his, his opportunities. He's a highly technical knockout puncher. How do you beat somebody like that? Well, I tell him is Tank is one of the guys who try to woe you to sleep. He's one of the guys, he lets you get off on punches. He lets you throw combinations. You know, he'll throw a few shots here and there, you know, just so you can respect him a little bit. And then he'll try to woe you to sleep. And the later round, eight, nine round, when you're wearing down a little bit, and they see, you know, you're throwing your punches off, or you're slowing down a little bit, and that's when Tank will jump on you and catch you with a big shot. 
And I think a lot of times it catches a lot of people not paying attention or not focused 100%, and then that's when he jumps on his opponent. So for him, it's going to be a real mess of battle, but you got to stay 100% focused and ready each second of the round. He says, we're tank. It's not like he's, he is explosive. He's explosive, he's fast, he's quick. So you have to be 100% ready because at any moment, you know, he can press on the gas. You and Derek James are 100% in sync about all that? Uh, no. Not in agreement? No. That's all right, all right? <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I wish you luck and uh, can't wait to see how many great fighters you wind up promoting in your promotional career. Thank you. I appreciate it. I hope this will be my first world champion. That'd be great. Yes, sir. I, I don't know that, I mean, obviously there are some. Oscar De La Hoya has a large promotional business. So aren't that many. Yeah. So it'll be exciting to see what you can do. Thank you. I appreciate it. My privilege.